Let's turn now to uh, some similar issues in, uh, in law, uh, because there have been a number of cases, probably over the last 10 or 15 years they've come to the forefront, where probabilistic arguments of one form or another have been used and grossly misused in courts of law. Um, there have been a number of cases in particular involving uh, evidence of infant deaths, unexplained infant deaths. The most prominent one was about 10 years back. Uh, there was a case of uh, a lawyer called Sally Clark who had the unfortunate uh, experience that uh, two ch young children of hers both died in unexplained but apparently natural circumstances. Uh, the second child, they were both in the age of two months, one was born after the death of the other. Um, and there was no real evidence to suggest uh, any foul play, but it was regarded as a very strange coincidence that two, child, two children um, of the same mother in the same family uh, in similar circumstances should die of natural causes. Um, a rather spurious calculation was done which put the probability of this event at 1 in 73 million. Um, nobody can believe that calculation, but let's suppose that the probability of two children dying of natural causes in the same family uh, is very, very small. Does that mean that if it happens, they couldn't have died of natural causes? Um, that clearly uh, is, is a fallacious argument, but this was the argument which was essentially presented to the court and resulted in Sandy Clark's conviction. There have been similar cases in uh, there was a very prominent case recently in the Netherlands where a nurse was convicted of multiple murders of patients on the grounds that she had been present in a large number of incidents where uh, patients either had died or needed to be resuscitated because they were near death. Um, and a calculation, again, pretty spurious, was done of the probability that this nurse would have been around on shift in all those cases, the number of one in 342 million, which is as small as to be completely negligible, was quoted. In that case, uh, there was a tremendous uproar about the uh, complete misuse of, of figures and statistical reasoning. And uh, in the end, uh, after many, many years of, uh, um, of public outrage and finally getting the case reopened. Not only was she released, but in an unprecedented move, the Dutch um, Minister of Justice actually made a, a formal public apology to, to, to the nurse. Um, so we see that uh, uh, the correct use of probability and statistics is fundamental to matters genuinely of life and death, fundamental to issues of the correct application of justice, fundamental to understanding the uh, impact of diagnostic tests in medicine. For example, there is uh, a test called the ELISA test, uh, which is an indicator of whether you uh, are suffering from HIV. Um, it's not absolutely perfect. It's got something like a 1% false positive rate. That's 1% of the time that it's applied to somebody who is actually disease free, it will register positive. Does that mean that if it registers positive, then there's only a 1% chance that you're disease free? No, not at all. The interpretation of figures like this is subtle. It's not particularly difficult, but it is a matter of getting it right. Not just doing the sums, but doing the logic. And that's what excites me about probability and statistics, getting the logic right.